what's something that you're concerned about on track? Um, losing oil pressure during a run. Like the, the biggest thing that could happen is the dry sump belt falling off. Try to shut that thing off as fast as possible. Okay, so what we can actually do in the software is we can have oil pressure displayed, but another thing on top of that is we can set an alarm. Mm -hmm. So if that oil pressure drops to say 10 to 15, where you know something catastrophic has happened, mm -hmm. we can have the whole screen light up in <coughs> alarm mode to where you know, okay, if I don't shut this down, I'm going to lose my motor. Yeah. You, can you have it be variable within a window or is it just um, kind of like a high and low number? So for example, like our oil pressure will dip down sometimes, right? Like yep. you clutch, you know, run up on turn or, you know, clutch in, car might come almost to a stall, drops down to like 10 PSI, mm -hmm. but it just comes right back up and at 500 RPM, it's not a problem. But if we see 10 PSI at 6,000 RPM, that's when you want the big warning light to come on. So that's one of the benefits of the software and the configurable alarms is you can have a number of different conditions that need to be met in order to trigger that alarm. Hmm. So you can set it up to be <clears throat> oil pressure below 10 PSI above when over 2,000 RPM or something above 2,000 RPM while coolant temp is above 200 oh, geez. <laughs> while vehicle wow, the sky speed is blue and we're pulling on so, the handbrake oh, that's very helpful this this screen is pretty awesome so we got each EGT um, on each cylinder and we have the lambda collecting on both um, collectors the the k-type <clears throat> EGT sensors are a very robust sensor They'll last a very long time in the collector, so mm -hmm. you don't need to worry about changing them out constantly, mm -hmm. where a wideband sensor is great for some initial tuning, but for longevity, you probably don't want to leave the sensor in there full time. Yeah, I think this will make a huge difference and just allow us to get a little more power out of the car um, reliably. So being able to see how each cylinder is working instead of just kind of like raising the whole limit and hoping that the whole exactly. thing stays together. So another one of the modules that we have here in the car is mm -hmm. the vehicle dynamics module. Um, really pumped on that one. That one's going to give you your three-axis accelerometer with roll, pitch, and yaw data. And in a drift car, what would you use that for? Well, of course, we're always trying to achieve the most amount of speed with the most amount of angle as smooth as possible. Exactly. And so to have a box that tells us how fast we're going, how sideways the car is, and how much that's adjusting and like the g-load change is super critical so we've always just done it by feel and um, just one gps sensor knowing our overall speed and um, we never had the ability to um, data log the actual angle um, and how that changes when we make changes to the car so that's awesome so that'll be a great piece that'll integrate into your program and it's going to log in the dash, mm -hmm. the AEM CD7 carbon dash. It will log there right alongside your EGT data and your engine data from mm -hmm. the Motec M150. On top of that, you have the ability to do a video overlay with a GoPro video. We actually um, you know, take videos in, in the car, of course, um, between rounds. And when I will sit there and use it for um, just personal data, right? Like watch runs, see how I'm mimicking with other cars and such, but um, it's also like good to be able to refer back to if we're having an issue and we can see um, steering input because we're actually not allowed to have a steering sensor. Okay. So the only way to really see what we're doing with the steering wheel and how the front end is working, as in like understeer, if the car is like pushing through a corner, it's like we can yeah. basically just look at what I'm doing with the car and be able to look back at it. When you're looking at data and you just see a bunch of bar graphs and you see the throttle kind of coming down and the speed comes down and I'll be like, oh, that's like where the car was kind of pushing a little bit. Like, was it though? Or were you just like too far outside or too close or was the guy in front going too slow? And it's like, well, like, I don't know. So if we can lay a video over top and it like is a lead run and I did just kind of like get a little too much angle first and I'm just trying to catch the car and, you know, steering back into it and lifting off the throttle, um, we can see that it was like a driver error and not, you know, just inconsistency with the engine or something like that. Exactly. Or the flip side of that. Something actually needs to be adjusted. That's right. Where you it's need never a my fault. little bit more suspension dampening. <laughs> or you, maybe you need more power. Everybody always needs more power, right? Yeah, absolutely. Come back from that event, which I failed at. 
far, but I didn't make it past first round. <laughs> and sold a car, sold a bunch of stuff, and I picked up a Nissan 350Z. It had just come back to the market uh, in 2003, and I felt that getting a car that was going to be new and 